Emo versus ratio is bij deze twee heren misschien een beetje overdreven, alhoewel de ene toch gevoeliger is en de andere net allergisch voor te veel sentiment. Politicus Rick Torfs en ma- maatschappijcriticus Theodore Dalrymple. Ja, meneer Torres en uh, Mr. Dalrymple. Welcome, Hello. welcome Thank in our you. show. Um, you are in Belgium for the, 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 the book fair in yes. Antwerp tomorrow. Huh? Yes. Why are you so popular here and in the Netherlands? Can you explain your, your, your success in, in the Low Countries? Well, I think in, in uh, Holland originally, uh, it was really, it's a terrible thing to have to say, but I think the two assassinations uh, changed the atmosphere in the Netherlands. And you mean um, Theo van Gogh and, and uh, Pim Fortuyn? Yes. And uh-huh. uh, before that, I don't think uh, anyone would have been interested in what I had written. So they That be- is quite cynical then. then. So you it's are not cynical. I think it's probably true. I think the atmosphere, the political atmosphere but changed I mean, in... Or, uh, intellectual atmosphere changed in the Netherlands, as far as I can understand. But I mean that you are, in a way, the beneficiary of the assassinations, or how do you... <sighs> well, I don't think I've made that much money from it, actually, <laughs> so yet. I'm not that much of a beneficiary, but uh, in the sense that I don't think my books would have been published before, I suppose the answer is yes, I, I am that beneficiary. Because a change in mentality took place after those uh, murders? I think so. I, uh-huh. But I don't know the Netherlands well enough to, s- mm-hmm. to know whether that's uh, realistic. I see. Uh, meneer Tors, bent u vertrouwd met het werk van uh, meneer Dalrymple? Well, I read his book this week. Uh, it was mm-hmm. uh, quite nice. I liked it a lot. And he's also a very nice person. A little bit of a grumpy pessimist also. He doesn't <laughs> like too much the welfare state. But uh, oh, he's okay for the rest. Uh, I can live with him <laughs> up until now. Goed, <laughs> toevallig, <laughs> vertelde je me daar straks. Heb jij het boek ook gekocht? Yes, it's such a coincidence because we'll be sitting uh, pretty close to each other at the book fair, and and I saw his book there, and and I read, of course, his columns every now and then. Uh-huh. So I thought he's so um, disgusting, interesting. So that's why I bought a book. Disgusting, yes, interesting. Dat moet je straks toelichten. Dat belooft. En uh, meneer de Waal, kent u? Uh, zijn werk? Ik ken zijn werk en ik, ik lees af en toe ook zijn, zijn columns. En ik moet zeggen, soms vind ik ze, vind ik ze erg chockant. Uh, het is een, een conservatief en ik heb natuurlijk respect voor alle mogelijke ideologieën. Maar ik was bijvoorbeeld na de dood van Amy Winehouse nogal gechoqueerd uh, over het, uh, het woord, het, uh, het taalgebruik eigenlijk. Van u, heeft zeggen... die, u, heeft die, sorry, u heeft die column meegebracht. Ja, Misschien het, straks eens heb... even. Ja, dus allee, Amy Winehouse. Uh, Gestikt in haar eigen braaksel vond ik eigenlijk nogal heel uh, kernachtig geformuleerd, maar ik was er even van gechoqueerd. Mishandelde vrouwen zijn geen eenduidige slachtoffers. Ze zijn vaak ook medeplichtig aan hun eigen mishandeling. Ik denk dat er morgen de vrouwendag doorgaat. Ik vind dat heel chockante stelling namelijk. Ik stel me soms de vraag waarom het zo polemisch en zo cru, als het ware, formuleren. Ja, dan ik, moet ik ben toch... een voorstander van debat, maar hij gaat wel heel ver. Ja, dan moet ik toch meneer Dalrymple even op uh, laten reageren, toch? Ja? Um, well, I don't think... Uh, what I was uh, drawing attention to, I can't... To tell you the truth, I can't uh, remember exactly what I mm-hmm. said in the column. Uh, if I was talking about uh, abused women, I was talking about my experience in the hospital, where, where actually I saw hundreds of uh, abused women every uh, year. As a psychiatrist? You as a psychiatrist. In a prison, eh? as, yes. as a psychiatrist. Uh-huh. In the hospital, the prison yes. was next door. Yes. And uh, I also saw very large numbers of men who uh, had abused uh, women and mm-hmm. also quite a lot of women who had abused men. But, but in your column you say they're not just victims, they're also some kind of... Uh, uh, Compli- they have their responsibility complicity. and complicity I think that is, that, is the, mm-hmm. that is the truth. Uh, because, for example, to give you a very uh, simple example, uh, a woman Abuse who... is never simple, but, but please continue. Yes, mm-hmm. well, uh, a woman uh, would come who had been abused. Mm-hmm. And, of course, she was a victim. That is true. But if you saw the man who had abused her, it would be immediately um, obvious uh, that he was an abuser. And what's more, she knew when she took up with him mm-hmm. that he had a- abused women. In my ward, for example, we often had abused men and abused women, and sometimes they would actually 
make an arrangement to mm -hmm. meet afterwards and knowing full well uh, what they were like. So I don't see that you can call that anything other than yes. a degree of complicity. But mm -hmm. you could uh, observe that, but do you think that uh, those women had uh, the choice? Uh, yes, they had the choice because they usually left uh, them in the end. Mm -hmm. My point is, I mean, uh, sometimes indeed you're right and it's true, well, things are very mixed and also the feelings are. But I think it's enough to be a victim and that's also something you write, by the way, in your own book. At some stage you say, OK, should a victim be a nice person? Well, not necessarily. The fact that someone committed a crime and makes a victim is sufficient uh, to condemn that attitude. So in that regard, there is maybe a slight internal contradiction in your reasoning. I don't think mm. so. I never suggested that, uh, that the person who abused a woman should be uh, right. treated in any other way than as, uh, mm -hmm. as no. a criminal. OK, but the word complicity, that's But what you try, please, when, because right. I'm very interested in this topic, what you try to explain then, what should these women do? Because it's, you say they're not only a victim, you're, what should they do then? What, what's the, the, or is uh, well, it just something you see? Because Everybody sees that, and, and indeed they mm -hmm. go to the next partner, and he also abuses them. So, well, uh, again, let me give you a particularly dramatic example of a uh, woman who took up with a man who had just come out of prison uh, for murdering mm -hmm. his previous mm -hmm. uh, girlfriend, and she knew that, and he, of course, was very abusive towards her, and in fact broke her jaw. Uh, previously, he'd also broken her arm. And we attempted to uh, provide her with some safety, and she, and, went, uh, uh, and, she mm -hmm. and she went back. Now, either you have to say mm -hmm. she doesn't mm -hmm. make decisions for herself, in which case she's not like you and me; she's not a, a full human being, or or she is mm -hmm. not co-responsible. You can't say co-responsible. This, mm -hmm. th this man was it's monstrous. True, but yeah. what should we do then as a society being responsible? Or should we just say you're responsible yourself, uh, we drop no, you? But the import the important, no, on the contrary, if you just turn people into victims, if you say you are a victim and nothing but she a victim, do anything she can't uh, do anything yeah. herself. Uh, what, okay. what my object was to try and persuade people, if you like, that they didn't have to accept and it, that, that there know. was something and that, that they have, could do. Um, uh, do have a choice, eh? And you do have a choice, yes. Even naar aanleiding van uh, de column die um, meneer De Waal gelezen had, maar u heeft nog over andere dingen uh, geschreven, moeten we het eigenlijk ook nog even over hebben. Misschien nog even terug naar de boekenbeurs, we zijn daar even gaan kijken, um, gaan polsen naar ja, mensen die zich aangetrokken voelen tot uw werk daar. afstand van, van uh, gevestigde ideeën. Bijvoorbeeld, hij zegt ook leven het vooroordeel. Dus uh, je moet, hij stimuleert je om op een andere manier te gaan denken. Ja. Je moet hebben aangetrokken. Kritiek op de sentimentele samenleving is, een, is geen gekke idee. Maar het hangt er natuurlijk allemaal vanaf wat er mee gedaan wordt verder. Hij drijft de spot met de moderne mo moraal. Wel, wel. Ik ben benieuwd. De filantroop testament van een serie moordenaar. Als het is wat ik vrees dat het is, dan is het een programma op zichzelf. Worden we te veel betutteld, zoals Darwinkel zegt? Er is alleszins een uitstraling van, van betutteling. Uh, al die, die zelfhulpboeken, al die bijvoorbeeld de kookboeken. Er zijn meer, meer kookboeken dan er mensen zijn die nog koken, denk ik. Ik vind het niet echt provocerend. Het, is meer, het zet meer tot nadenken aan dan dat het provoceert. En dat is goed? En dat vind ik op zich wel goed. Ik heb, ik heb niks tegen het... Uh, zelfs, zelfs hardere titel van een boek. De vraag is altijd natuurlijk wat er in, uh, wat in het boek zelf staat. Hè. Als je een boek per se Mein Kampf wilt noemen, dan doe je dat maar. Maar de vraag is natuurlijk wat er binnen in dat boek staat. Dat is een ander paar mouwen. Ja, we moeten ze misschien even uh, helpen. Mr. Dalrymple, can you say, or summarize for us, what is the bottom line of your view on society? Because in, uh, the subtitle of your book is The Toxic Cult of Sentimentality. There's too much sentimentality, according to you, in yeah. our world. 
uh, well, not in the whole world. Oh. Um, I was talking mainly about Britain, actually, mm -hmm. um, which is a very sentimental society. Uh, it, it, sentimentality, Oscar Wilde said, is the uh, desire to feel an em to have an emotion without paying the price for it. And in my sense, it's a, a kind of exaggerated expression of sentiment in order to, f uh, to um, look good in other people's eyes to f to, uh, for self-gratification uh, without actually any cost to oneself. Mm -hmm. And I think in Britain anyway, I, I can't speak for Belgium of course, uh, this is a very widespread mm -hmm. fault and it actually does drive quite a lot of our policy or has driven a lot of our policy in the past. Yeah. Uh, well, to some extent I agree, so I think sentimentality as a kind of uh, kitsch-like feeling is not something we truly need. What I miss in your book, however, is uh, a clear description of sensitivity, because you are indeed rejecting that sentimentality, sometimes with good, good arguments, but you seem to be a very, let's say, hard person eh, yes. towards others. And one of the problems is also because I think your thesis on sentimentality is just underpinning a deeper problem that you are exposing many times, namely the idea that our welfare society is making people weak eh, and they just try to find their way in it, uh, they have easygoing lifestyles. Mm -hmm. And then ultimately, sometimes you are really advocating, and that's really my problem with your thinking, you are advocating the abolition of that welfare state, saying, okay, if you don't help weak people, then you do help them ultimately, because they will be driven to do it out of themselves. And that's for me, well, it goes too far. Mm -hmm. I'm opposed to a leftist socialist state where people are taken care of from the beginning mm -hmm. till the end. But I'm also opposed to a hard world where just the merciless attitude of many people today in times of crisis eh, is seen by yourself, for instance, as ethically superior. So you are saying, okay, we abandon our solidarity, we do give up that, but it's ethically superior to abandon the weak. And there are problems. Problem. Well, what I would say is that our bureaucratic solidarity is not solidarity at all. And from my experience of dealing, uh, which is very extensive, on behalf of my patients with bureaucrats who are supposedly uh, expressing solidarity yeah. with these people, they are they are not. And furthermore, we can see in England, what, in England, I, I'm talking about England, I don't know what the situation sure. is in Belgium, uh, if we suggest, for example, cutting the salaries of the, uh, of the people who work in the welfare system rather than cutting the welfare itself, I think we'll see what it's all really about. Okay, but mm -hmm. now you are talking about yeah, the abuses the of the system, and that's my problem. You are saying the bureaucratic yeah. solidarity. By the ex expression itself, you already suggest that solidarity, the way we know it today, will be perceived as bureaucratic or will end up being bureaucratic. And that's partly true. There are abuses. But now we are living in times of increasing poverty, we will lose some part of our wealth and there is a risk that people, by an analysis, analysis such as yours, will abandon all solidarity by saying, look, yes, it's yes, all yes. abuse, yes. the unemployed, it's all abuse, ill people, Problem. all abuse, so let's drop Africa. it. And that's the danger. I'll even go there, because I think that, how you look at it in the history, at this moment we have actually relatively seen nog nooit zoveel mensen in deze wereld het relatief zo goed gehad. Maar sommigen hebben dat eigenlijk nog nooit zo kwalijk genomen. Maar de welvaart globaal is toegenomen. Waar ik een probleem heb met, uh, met het denken van, van meneer Dalrymple, is het feit dat je die tweedeling krijgt. Degene die mee kunnen en degene die niet mee kunnen. En ik heb natuurlijk ook een hekel aan die uh, verpampering en ik heb een hekel aan diegenen die geloven in de maakbaarheid van een sure. samenleving. Maar individuen, daar zit een potentie in. De mensen zijn niet gelijk, maar ze hebben allemaal capaci capaciteiten, ze hebben allemaal talenten. En het is de taak, de plicht ja. van een samenleving om het beste te halen ja. uit de mens zelf. En ik heb het gevoel dat men hier spreekt in een soort van opdeling in sociale categorieën. Ja. En diegenen die niet mee kunnen, ja, die, ja. die worden aan het ja. lot overgelaten. Ja. Mr. Dat Darimpo, krijg ik niet even laten reageren. Please. Uh, well, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure that I, I've categorized people quite as uh, clearly as you suggest. But I'm uh, fully in agreement with you, for example, about, um, about trying to educate people. It's very important. People should be given an opportunity. But it's astonishing in Britain that, mm. for example, after spending four times as much now as we spent in 1950, uh, an, an education that costs 60 to 80,000 euros a head, 20% of our population 
uh, cannot uh, read and write yeah. properly. Mm -hmm. This is a scandal. Now, what do our head teachers go on strike about? They don't go on a strike about the fact that their children can't read. They go on strike well, because their pensions are going to yeah, be cut. I'm not sure okay, whether that is always true. And I think, well, well okay, is education is a very important thing. I completely agree. But, there but is not a in Africa, you say. It's well, no, is in Africa. Talking, uh, he's talking about the UK. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That's, that's no, but you say in your writings, in Africa, it's needless. It's don't spend your money on educating people no, in I know, Africa. That's, uh, that, that's a misinterpretation yeah. of yes. what I said. What I said was, okay, it, is not, it is not true that just educating more and more people in a society in which the purpose of being educated mm -hmm. is to get into yeah. the government. Right. Okay. So that you can that's extract nice. things from the people. Yeah. Really angry. But, but you're well, uh, that's a bit. why. But uh, I mean, yeah. you but you know what? The main, may, may I? Because yes. the main problem in my eyes, in, in your way of thinking, is is maybe an unexpected one. Because rightly, you are pleading for more education. That's fully correct. But um, if people have to live all the way you think they should live, then they all become little Darwimples. So you are, in a way, <laughs> imposing your own model of living to everybody. People making vigorous efforts to do it extremely well. And then, strangely enough, we will end up with a, a kind of uniform society with a lack of originality. Mm -hmm. So, you, well, people have the right to be slightly different. Of course, they shouldn't make abuse yeah, of their rights. But that's they should yeah. truly remain different people, not mm -hmm. all Mike. making yeah. vigorous efforts to be successful Could in society the way, way you put it. Yeah, what I well, want, I think that we're talking about positief wat ik wel vind dat Neil Darwinpel heel goed aangeeft is die verantwoordelijkheid waar we laat ons eerlijk zijn als maatschappij de voorbije jaren te veel aan voorbij gegaan ja. zijn. Zowel bij criminaliteit mm. als soms bij armoede. Als omdat je mm. zegt, je hebt een verantwoordelijkheid. Maar ja. als verantwoordelijkheid zo belangrijk is, dan denk ik, ja oké, okay, diegenen die het dan wel goed hebben, die hebben dan toch ook een verantwoordelijkheid om solidair te zijn met de mensen die het niet goed doen. En ja. dat een actief oproepen om niet solidair te zijn, daar kan ik niet. Ja, ja, well, I'm, I'm sure that... Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, please. I'm sure there's no law against you giving your entire salary to the poor. Mm -hmm. And those who wish to make, in Britain right. anyway, those who wish to make voluntary contributions uh, to tax are mm -hmm. free to do so. But I think the numbers of people who actually do so is rather small. But, but what yeah. and, and one of the you're things, helping them. I say don't. Please no, no, don't I'm not, send your I'm money. Not say, I'm not saying that. Well, I, actually, in Britain, I've investigated our charities, for example. Our charities yeah. are completely mm -hmm. corrupt. Uh, they have but there's always so many reasons ma not to help, not to be so, to do be any solidarity. It is a bad thing well, for I the do, world to have an active call against solidarity. I it's did. a really bad thing for yeah. society. Let me tell you. Let me tell you that I spent 15 years yeah. uh, being on duty one night in three and having to get up and do it, and I gladly did it. I mean, right. I, it's true I was mm. paid, but I did actually yeah. uh, do that. And, 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 and so I feel that I'm not quite a heartless person no, no, to no. get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to see else someone like who's not... I would like to mention, want we kunnen hier nog heel, heel uh, pittig en lang over doorgaan. That is uh, Bart, Bart de Wever, you know, you know mm. him. Um, not so long ago you received a prize here in Belgium, the Liberty Award for Free Speech. And uh, uh, Bart de Wever gave a speech on that yes. uh, occasion. That Theodore Dalrymple should be granted the Liberty Award seems practically obvious to me. It hardly needs any explanations. The books of Dr. Dalrymple speak for themselves. Naturally, I am not an objective critic in this regard. Not only because Dr. Dalrymple once served me a nice cup of tea in his lovely home near Birmingham, but mainly because of my well-known appreciation for his work. I'm not ashamed to say that he has been a profound influence. He cannot uh, hide his admiration uh, for you. Are you two of a kind? Um, uh, well, uh, I met uh, uh, Mr. De Weber when he, when he came mm -hmm. to my house. He was interviewing me when he worked for De Morgen, I think, uh, and he interviewed me. Mm -hmm. And uh, he w I found him... I didn't know who he was, of course. And at that time, I don't think he was quite so well-known as a politician as he is now. Mm -hmm. um, and I found him uh, charming, uh, witty, Mm -hmm. He's very witty. Yes, yes. And, and, but uh, where, do, where do you... Perhaps that, of course, is a, just a characteristic of uh -huh. Belgian politicians. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but he... But, uh, so, uh, and he, he asked me 
um, uh, he asked me uh, for an interview, so I gave it to him. Yeah, but as it, you are in a way, and it, it's nice, and Mr. Weber, I know him very well, is indeed a witty person, and, and, and even more things, but we don't have time. Uh, now, the thing is, uh, <laughs> don't uh, we? as Mr. De Wever is probably becoming very important in Belgian society, mm -hmm. and as you are his model, more or less, then my question would be, how do you see the future of the welfare society? What would you keep, and what would you abolish? Or would you just focus on charity? I think we would have to um, try and alter it gradually. Uh, mm -hmm. So we can't... Uh, retrospectively remove no. a benefit because once people are... But are what, if you were in charge and you deserve it truly, what would you do? <laughs> I would, uh, I would uh, time limit uh, benefits. Also for people who are ill or pensions, retirement pensions? I would uh, try and make... Uh, Compulsory euthanasia? Uh, well, I think time that's a slightly abusive, if I may What do you mean so, by time <laughs> limit? I mean, I just asked the question. I, I think there's, uh, welfare yeah. state is much more likely to lead to compulsory euthanasia, actually, than mm. anything else. But not anyhow... So sure. um, I'm not sure. Uh, uh, well, I'm not sure, but yeah. it's <laughs> possible. Um, uh, um, I've forgotten now what I was going to say. Yeah, the time limits. Because the time, the time, the time yeah. limits. With regard to illness, let me just tell you that in, in the United Kingdom, and it may be completely different in Belgium, I don't know, what our government did was move people from the list of unemployed mm -hmm. to, to, pe to, to the illness uh, list. Mm. And this was uh, grotesquely uh, dishonest. It was slightly beneficial uh, from the point of view of the people who were moved because they got slightly more money and they didn't have to look yeah, for work again. Let, let me just finish. Uh, the, uh, the doctors, all, m most of them were signing things which they knew to be untrue and the government was benefiting from untrue propaganda that it had reduced the uh, unemployment yeah. rate. Now, this is okay. terribly corrupting in a society, yeah, in my look. view. But some people yeah, are yeah, that yeah, yeah, but here. some people are really ill. They die. Uh, they die from diseases. Uh -huh. I mean, you are always focusing on abuse, and that should and be I discontinued. Think. But some people are really ill. But really uh, ill. Last, last one. I'm a you, doctor. Mr. Sorry, yeah. because we have to finish here. <laughs> <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> As a doctor, <laughs> I, you don't have to tell me that uh, well, people have become uh, ill. Well, we agree on uh -huh. some point at least. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, thank However, uh, the fact is that the majority of people on sickness benefit in Britain have no real sickness that prevents them from... It's so <laughs> good that he <laughs> says this because yeah. it's okay. so uh, uh, critical and no, we need uh, to think but about it's not it. Nog stof genoeg om over verder te discussiëren. Het zal voor een andere keer moeten zijn, Mr. Dowling. Morgen nog een boekenbeurt. Thank you very much. Tomorrow you have to be fresh for the fancy pair. Yes, and we can discuss there. Have fun tomorrow. Thank you for coming.